Hi everyone, this is me again with my cameos. I hope you are doing well. It's a really nice, nice um, Saturday afternoon. I wanted to uh, show you, as promised in my last video, my newest cameo um, additions to my collection. I had mentioned uh, in my last video that I was going to show you a new um, cameo uh, bracelet that I got recently. And in the meantime, I had a few more that uh, finally arrived and I wanted to present each one to you so that you would discover a few novelties. Um, let me start by showing you this uh, cameo which um, is uh, mounted in a cuff bracelet. It is uh, by a really famous company. Maybe a few of you know this company. It's pretty famous. It's a uh, company that was um, established in 1876 in Massachusetts. It's called Whiting and Davis. And this um, company is really famous because they patented a particular um, type of uh, material uh, for doing mostly handbags and accessories. Um, this material is called mesh and it's made of uh, individual little um, elements like little rings and little... Um, you know, metal parts uh, that are linked, formed and linked by hand um, until 1912, where they introduced a machine that would do um, assemble those automatically. And they patented those and the bags are really famous. Uh, they issued also jewelry. Uh, the, the bracelets like this one, the cuff style, is very famous by this company. As you can see, it opens up and it has uh, one of those safety chains. Uh, when I bought it, this one really cheap, it didn't have the safety chain anymore, but I plan on adding one in a gold color so that it would be complete again. You can see the little hole here where it attaches and then it has a little ri the little ring that is left and you can leave it as a permanent safety chain you know which was the 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 scope of this you know the 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 reasoning behind it if you would if it would open which is pretty impossible because it fastens up so snugly and 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 uh, tightly but in case you know if uh, this lever would be pulled or whatever or would come loose with time you would have the safety chain which would um, avoid for the cuff or the bracelet to to uh, get lost or uh, fall on the on the ground you know what i mean um, the, the material is always kind of like a metal that uh, doesn't tarnish, either gold colored or red gold colored or silver colored. This one is gold colored and it always has an insertion like, um, you know, a, a fake cameo. This one is fake. It's made of a glass paste um, or a uh, you know, a gem, it could be a fake gem, you know, a synthetic gem, whatever, that would look like a precious stone, I don't know, ruby or whatever, crystal quartz, smoke quartz, uh, you can see often by Whiting and Davis. And I really like this style, it's very Victorian, um, even though it's a vintage uh, bracelet, most probably from the 20s. Um, it looks very opulent, you know, Rococo type, which was very fashionable in the Victorian era. Uh, a bit less in the Edwardian era, but it could also pass for a 
you know, um, inspired by Victorian, uh, sorry, by Edwardian period. Um, I really fell in love with it because it has such a great, great, um, it, it is really preserved so nicely. I thought I would put it on quickly for you. Hold on a second. Um, I don't know exactly what it depicts, but I have a an idea. Okay, this is what it looks like worn on the hand. As you can see it's really, really nice. Uh, you can wear it a bit like a watch, you know, tighter or looser. And it is really, really nice, in my opinion. It has this classical, typical uh, Greek or Roman mythology style head of a woman. Could be a goddess or a famous um, woman of the antiquity, you know. I have an idea of what it could be. Let me show you, since my camera from my cell phone isn't really great at focusing. Um, let me show you uh, what my idea is. Um, you know, this is a photo of the um, sales ad, and you can see that uh, she has a you know, a patina all around her uh, crevices and, and rims, you know, and the patina allows you to, to, um, to see better what, it, what she looks like. But I cleaned it really nicely as I didn't like the patina, but it gives you an idea of, of, the, of the hair dough, which leads me to to the idea of her maybe being um Bernice you know Bernice was a um a princess or a queen I think a princess from Macedonia I think you know from the um old uh, you know region from from uh, uh the Gre the Grecian period and she, um, she wa uh, had was famous for her uh, opulent hair, you know, long and opulent, beautiful hair. And when her uh, husband went to war, I think, or on on uh, like Hercules, you know, um, challenging perils and having to succeed in, in mortal ta tasks, you know, that he had to do because uh, for whatever reason, uh, f the, the, by um, imposed onto him by the Grecian gods, you know, she was, it, it's a bit like, uh, like a Penelope and uh, Hercules, I think it was. Um, you know, she would she would have to wait for him for so many years and she uh, no sorry sorry it's penelope and odysseus oh my god it's odysseus and penelope you know odysseus would go uh on perilous uh, travels for decades many many years and penelope would stay at home just uh, being being um being afraid, you know, for him never to return. So, um, uh, in this case, Bernice would promise to, um, for a safe, in, in turn, for a safe return of her husband, uh, she would uh, pledge to Aphrodite, the goddess of uh, love and beauty, she would, uh, that she would sacrifice her beautiful hair and the story of Bernice's hair is very famous, you know, you can usually look it up under Bernice's hair lock or strand. And um, I cleaned this cameo up and I think it looks a bit like, um, it's reminiscent a bit of uh, ivory, ivory or alabaster. I really like the white creamy look of it. 
Yeah, so that's for the bracelet uh, by Whiting and Davis, you know, company. I think I mentioned it's from company uh, founded in Massachusetts. Um, the second cameo that I got after that is this incredible, opulent uh, brooch and uh, pendant. You can use it as a pendant, as you can see, uh, or as a brooch. Sorry, there is a little lint on it. Uh, you can see it has a C-clasp, it has a protruding needle, but I suspect the needle was maybe changed at some point. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, the depiction uh, on this cameo is a very, very classical, typical um, subject that was chosen for cameo carving. Uh, it's uh, depicting Hebe or Hebe uh, in, in uh, Gre uh, ancient Gre Greek and um, her uh, the personification um, of Hebe in for the Roman mythology is Juventas in Latin, which is uh, youth, actually. She is the daughter of um, the daughter of Zeus and Hera, or um, Jupiter and Juno, and the wife of the mortal Hercules. And she is famous uh, as to be, um, yeah, as I said, the goddess of youth, and she is always depicted um, usually with an eagle. I think it's really a remarkably well carved Hebe in this case on this cameo and a beautiful eagle. Often the eagle is not nicely um, carved, but on this cameo I really like the way they anatomically pretty much correctly uh, depicted the eagle. Uh, in some descriptions, you can read that the eagle is supposed to uh, to the, to um, symbolize Zeus himself or Jupiter, meaning her father. Uh, but since um, Zeus or Jupiter had an eagle like as a pet or maybe even more than an eagle, which actually is the symbol of Jupiter or um Zeus, uh, I suspect it's the pet of Zeus and not Zeus himself, but you know, you can differ in this opinion. I think even that the eagle of uh, um, Zeus or Jupiter had a name, but I forgot the name. And she is usually depicted um, while feeding the eagle. So you can read usually as a description, uh, Hebe feeding Zeus or Hebe feeding Zeus's eagle, you know. And Hebe is actually, um, was uh, known as to be the so-called cup bearer of the gods on Olympus. Uh, she used to go... Uh, make sure that each guest or each god in the Olympus uh, had enough to drink and to eat, uh, which would be, you know, the food would be called ambrosia and the, the, the drink would be um, nectar. As we know, nectar and ambrosia was the food and drink of the gods. Uh, that allowed them to be immortal. And Hebe would go around bar from table to table or whatever, from mouth to mouth, making sure they would have enough to eat and to drink. And she's usually depicted uh, pouring some nectar onto a bowl for the eagle. You can see how beautiful she is. She is carved in a 
sardonyx helmet shell and uh, the cameo itself is set in a pinchbeck mount it's uh, really incredibly thick and super heavy it's very big i think it's it's i think six and a half or seven centimeters like two and a half uh, inches and it's a beautiful mount that i fell in love with uh, sorry i forgot to say it's sardonyx helmet shell you can see the back layer of the shell the ground layer is a nice dark uh, brown color and the figure the top layer is really nicely snow white so it's a it's nice and you can see the quality you know when you are uns unsure if a cameo is genuine you can place it against a source of light and you can see it's translucent and i fell in love with the mount of this cameo it is actually it depicts a snake that uh, whose whose body you know the body of the snake goes all around the cameo and you can see how it um, holds it firmly you can see this this here is the tail here is the tip of the tail and this leads into the head of the snake you can see it has a nice open mouth you can see you know how the mouth is open it looks like an eel a bit but that's because the style um, is supposed to be um, inspired by depictions of the baroque era or mannerist era which depicted snakes this way you can google this by period and you can see um you know those that are a bit fancy a bit artistry like me you can easily see depictions of snakes that would look a little bit like medieval dolphins or other um kind of dragon-like creatures you can see the scales on top of the head and neck and you can see it has this, these beautiful wine or ivy uh type of um, leaves intertwined with the snake i think it's amazing i've never seen a cameo like this honestly and this cameo comes from canada it's really really beautiful and heavy i've been wearing this on a chain and i have to say it's really heavy i don't like the the bail much but it's the original pinchbeck bail and you can simply you know wear it like this or as a brooch i hope you can see it well i always like to watch videos like these on youtube on my cell phone or tablet and then with your fingers on the screen you can enlarge it and you can really see the details well even if it's uh, filmed with a crappy cell phone like mine i hope you can see it so that's that and the next one oh yeah the next one is a really really beautiful cameo it comes directly all the way from kind of very unusual and strange from those who want to have a guess <laughs> you will never guess where it comes from but it is from uruguay you guys i don't know honestly if there's anything more beautiful than this cameo it is a bit smaller obviously than the other one 
and it has a very beautiful simplistic setting and it's a reddish gold setting uh, it is 14 carats solid gold and you can see the the mount is a classical cameo mount it it goes all around the cameo snuggly which is a kind of an english style it's called when it's a simplistic um, mount like this uh, snuggly around the cameo and then it has an outer layer outer um uh like how can i describe this in english it has this outer frame you know that is a shine through as you can see this is often uh, seen in cameo um, settings or frames or mounts you can see an, again the uh, indicator that it's a genuine old cameo um, the needle is protruding from the frame it's longer and it has a typical old c clasp as you can see and this frame is really really beautiful it has uh, eight tiny little rose cut diamonds in there they are really tiny but you know the rose cut is a very beautiful early period for diamond uh, jewelry early period uh, type of cutting and depending on the light they really sparkle they are so nice i really fell in love actually but really with the cameo the frame was secondary you know i always look for the cameo first obviously but the combination was is absolutely gorgeous and as you guessed obviously those who are a bit knowledgeable about cameos this is obviously eos eos or in greek in and ancient greek or um aurora you know in latin for the roman mythology um in italian it's aurora and uh, or eos you know it's very very a very very classical uh depiction uh, or subject sorry subject to carve uh, to be carved on a cameo um just same as hebe very classical subject and um this one is really remarkably well done it's an incredible good incredibly good quality you can see the detail is amazing honestly very very beautiful you can see every little detail the wings of the it, this is a dove she even has the i'm sorry for the focusing that it, it isn't focusing well maybe i can i'm sorry it just won't focus well which absolutely sucks see if i can show you better maybe now you can see maybe you can see the little eye of the dove and it even has the the um i don't know if it's the correct term it uh, is the the wax they have around the nostrils you know of the on the little beak and uh, you can see the depiction of Eos is typical with the little wreath of roses or flowers. You can see the de amazing detail of the little leaves. The face is absolutely stunning. It reminds me a bit of uh, uh, paintings by the French classical painter Adol Adolphe Bouguereau. You can Google him uh and she is uh wrap you know she has this beautiful uh scar for veil wrapped around her it's a very typical depiction and the details 
are amazing, you know, the carving, the quality. You can see she is on clouds, depicted with clouds, which is, uh, you know, showing that she actually lives in the sky, you know. She represents, obviously, the birth of day. She is, um, Eos is, uh, is uh, the sister of Selene, the goddess of, uh, of um, the moon. And her brother is Helios, the god of the sun. So she is the goddess of the dawn and sister to Selene and to Helios. And you could see her depicted also with a chariot with uh, drawn by horses and she would uh, she would uh, announce the day she always has this melancholic look about her you know how she gazes in front of her with the head a bit held her head a bit held high and uh, yeah, and the dove usually holding this cornucopia, which I think you can, the the, the full horn with uh, with abundance, you know, of uh, here its flowers. I think sometimes she the the dove holds a flame or a lightning to symbolize Zeus, you know, the god of the Olympus. I'm not sure if all of this is correct because when it the bird holds um lightnings or uh flames in in its uh feet or fangs i think it's usually an eagle you can see her depicted uh, with an eagle as well but the classical way of depicting her or carving her in a cameo is with a dove i also forgot to mention for those who don't know that according to my research, a cameo is usually facing right, and when it faces left like these, or you know when it's a head depicted a head uh, and it faces left, it's less common. You know they would usually you know most of them are carved with a head uh, looking to the right and that means when it's looking to the left it has a little bit of a higher value in a cameo that is actually what i have found out after reading a lot you can see the details are amazing the little ears she has a iris and pupil carved in which probably you can't see but she's so beautiful you can see how great the quality is as well on this one yeah before my battery dies i wanted to show you the last one i got or the latest one i got which is absolutely an incredible stunner you can see the size difference in this i think this is the biggest one i have now uh this one is from uruguay as i said this one i got from england from the uk and it depicts the same subject. This is Eos again, or Aurora, again with a dove, holding again a cornucopia of little flowers. Uh, this one is set in a pinchbeck mount or frame, again with a beautiful sea clasp, with a protruding needle. This one is facing right which is the more common way. And this is uh, um, carved on a um, carnelian shell. You can see the carnelian shell has a more reddish basic layer or background layer, uh, kind of rust colored. And on the carving on the top layer, it has some nude peachy tones it's not completely white as you can see here it's really a snowy white if it's sardonyx um yeah and she has also as i mentioned before the typical wreath with the roses in this case you can see the carving is stunning the quality is 
absolutely amazing. She has uh, the morning star here carved in, depicted. You know, she is uh, symbolizes the birth of the day of the day, and often in a classical way, they are usually depicted with a little um, cloth uh, in their hair. You can see it even has a carved in seams, you know, fringe or seam here. It's really beautiful. Look at the detail, at the way the wings and feathers are carved in. It's absolutely stunning. You can see the iris, the pupil, the little expression, the lips. The nose, the cheeks, it's everything is so three-dimensional. It really is breathing. It's about almost as if it was breathing. It's so beautiful. This one I would probably I forgot actually to tell you the the age of these. This was sold as to be from the 1850s, I would say 1850s, maybe 1860s. This one, I would say 1860s. This one, I would say 1860s or 70s. Yeah, because you always have to Google a bit of um, um, art history and compare paintings to see if you find kind of matches, you know, for the style. The frame or mount on this one is absolutely superb. You can see it has little carving here on the four corners, if you can see it. And it has these crazy, elaborate, lavish little leaves, which look like wine or ivy leaves they are carved um on the surface and they wrap around the the frame all around as you can see it's extremely elaborate and yeah you can see the quality as well how translucent it is and as i was mentioning like this one it is a classic way classical way of of setting these cameos english style with a snug uh frame and then all around it has a a ring it makes it you know in on the idea of saturn you know like with a ring all around here it's a bit more clean more neoclassical and here it's a bit more fancy and Victorian type of uh, um, in style. Uh, yeah, and both are the same subject, but done in different styles and periods. It could be that both are from the 1860s, I don't know. This one is from England in Pinchbeck. This one is from Uruguay in 14 carats red gold with little rose cut diamonds. And this one is from Canada in pinchbeck as well. You can see the pinchbeck ones are kind of the same color, which makes sense. I hope you can see the details a bit. The quality is amazing, and you guys, these are, the value of these is pretty high, you know. This cameo, I would easily price around $2,000 very easily. And I paid, I don't want to, you know, I don't like to pay, talk about prices. This is more as a instructional uh, idea behind this because I I'm on the hunt always of uh, for treasures you know and I usually am really lucky I found this online on eBay and she asked exactly one tenth of 
the price of the value like 2500 easily and I paid 250 for this incredibly museal pristine condition cameo. Incredible but true and you can succeed as well if you know a bit how to hunt and search and google you know i would spend hours doing this you know each time i have a little budget aside like i everything i <laughs> i buy is just cameos who cares about eating food you know or buying stupid handbags or shoes you know my life is really buying books and buying cameos because i just love these are totally ravishing works of art honestly when i opened these i i wanted i i think i shed a few tears because they were so beautiful can't believe how beautiful these things are it's you know, my hands shake because I can't believe I am allowed to have this and look at this and feel this and wear this. It's crazy. Every time I put one on, just for my own enjoyment, I have people oh, come to me, approach me and go, my God, where did you get this? What is this? You know, and to, you know, with each single cameo, even if it's just a crappy one, people, wow, people love these. I hope really that they discover, you know, that they get kind of like a comeback because this is, is not grandma jewelry, you know, absolutely not. This is timeless. And yeah, I think I said everything I wanted to say, but... Yeah, I don't even know if this one is bigger. Uh, it's pretty much the same kind of, yeah. They are so amazing, honestly. I just can't believe how beautiful they are. And I thought in my next video, I would show you uh, most uh, subjects on my cameos, uh, but as a comparison by comparing more in detail these two, which have the same subject, and so on, you know, because I have a few, you know, several depicting the same subject, so that you would kind of uh, see a bit of uh, more in detail, in depth, what they show and how, and, you know, the style. And I thought I would print out um, examples of, uh, from paintings you know art history so that you would see uh, what I mean you know and if you have things to uh, teach me or correct or add or whatever comment I really really hope you leave a comment because I want to um, talk about these you know what do you have can you post a link to yours can you add some knowledge that I don't have or some corrections I I could make because you know I'm an amateur I'm not a I'm not a professional at all um yeah please do uh what I wanted to say actually <laughs> wanted to show the <laughs> the bracelet again so we don't forget the bracelet I'm trying to <laughs> show you this one as well it's really beautiful uh, in my next video i also want to show you the latest one that is on the way to me you know i am getting it for my birthday my birthday is on the 23rd of october <clears throat> and i it is a very special unique cameo that is coming home and i want to show you that one in particular as well with showing you um what uh, rare subject it is so yeah um hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you have a really nice uh weekend and uh doing well enjoying your cameos
thank you for watching and uh yeah see you next time guys bye bye